Insect pests are an increasing problem in agriculture and human health, and intervention is required to limit losses in crop and animal production and prevent disease transmission. Some insects can be the cause of trade embargoes arising from strict quarantine regulations or can infest commodities which require costly and hazardous chemical post-harvest treatments. Economic development and the well-being of a growing human population are often hampered by insect pests. It has been estimated that insect pests reduce the world's food supply by 25 percent. Insect pest management is therefore an important strategic component in raising food production and ensuring food security, improving animal and human health, and in protecting forests, stored products, and fiber crops. For many years, insect control methods were based primarily on insecticides. The consumption of insecticides is increasing worldwide at about 5% each year. However, insecticides pollute the environment and leave residues on agricultural produce. Insecticides also kill non-target beneficial organisms and lead to secondary pest resurgence and insecticide resistance. New legislation is restricting more and more the use of insecticides. Pest control interventions today are increasingly being implemented within the concept of integrated pest management, known as IPM. With more attention being given to ecological and environmental concerns. IPM involves integrating various suppression tactics applied in selected areas when pests exceed economically damaging densities. Tactics commonly integrated are methods of biological control, cultural control, physical control, and various forms of rational chemical control. However, reactive insect control on a field-by-field -field basis is inefficient. A more cost-effective pest management strategy is area-wide pest management, where the concept is to control entire populations of crop, livestock, or human insect pests in potentially large geographic areas, including agricultural, marginal, and natural areas, and with the active participation of all producers whole communities. The following graphs illustrate this general when a pest infests a broad geographical area including various commercial crops and wild and backyard host plants, pest control actions in a commercial crop have only a temporary effect. Pests from nearby areas reinvade and reinfest the commercial crop. And soon the pest problem exists as before. Therefore, frequent reactive control actions are required to protect the commercial crop. However, when the total pest population is controlled using an area-wide approach, including marginal areas and other sources of reinfestation in the surroundings of the agricultural areas, satisfactory pest control is achieved in the whole area. Without reinvasion, the population is slower in again reaching economic damage levels and thus fewer control actions are required. Area-wide pest management results in more sustainable and long-term pest control. With the lower density of an entire pest population, more selective, preventive and less insecticide-reliant management tactics become feasible. To cope with current environmental, economic and global trade challenges, Commercial producers increasingly have to collaborate, a trend which strongly encourages farmer participation in area-wide approaches to IPM. One of the area-wide management methods, the sterile insect technique, commonly referred to as the SIT, is a biological, environment-friendly method of pest suppression or eradication that fits well into this approach of area-wide and preventive insect pest management. 
The concept of integrating the SIT into IPM is called SIT-based area-wide. In contrast to insecticides, the SIT is most effective and efficient at low pest densities. It is usually not a standalone technology, but as a complementary component of an area-wide and sustainable long-term strategy in IPM. Compatible control methods, such as natural enemy augmentation and pheromone mating disruption, can be synergistic when integrated with the SIT. It is, therefore, appropriate to exploit natural population decreases or suppress the pest population before introducing the SIT. The SIT is an insect birth control technology, an autocidal method of pest control that exploits the normal mate-seeking behavior of insects. Insects, either pupae adults, when exposed to ionizing radiation, do not become radioactive, but become stressor as a result of indominant lethal mutations in sperm and ova. Whale is released into a population and mates with a fertile wild female. The eggs that she produces do not hatch due to the genetic damage in the sperm of the male with which she mated. This lack of geny results in population decline. Simple mathematical models of the impact of introducing sterile insects into a wild population were first formulated by Edward, a pioneer in developing the SIT. A more comprehensive model is the Curacao model. As shown in the graphic, when sufficient sterile males are introduced into a wild population to overcome the natural rate of increase, population numbers will inevitably decline resulting in environment-friendly pest suppression. In some cases, where the target population is isolated and the sterile insect releases continue, the sterile male to wild male over flooding ratio will increase and the population will decline at an increasing rate until it is eradicated, creating a pest-free area. The concept and application of the SIT were first developed in the 1950s in the USA. The target pest was the New World Screw Worm, a pest of cattle. The capability of the SIT to eradicate an insect pest created on the island of Curacao, where the screw worm fly was eliminated in 1954. The development of methods of mass rearing, large-scale sterilization and aerial release permitted this control technology to be applied from 1958 onwards over large areas of the southern USA. Reinvasion of the screwworm fly from Mexico into already eradicated areas led to the expansion of the program into Mexico in 1977. And eventually, country by country, all of Central America joined the program. The result? eradication of the screwworm as the program moved southward to Panama where a reinvasion barrier is now being established. To apply the SIT it is required that sufficient good quality insects are mass reared and irradiated well distributed in the field and are competitive with wild fertile insects in flight, mate finding, mating behavior and sperm transfer. The SIT has several advantages. The SIT is biological in nature and does not impact on biodiversity or harm the environment. Insecticide use is reduced, permitting natural enemies to act against secondary pests and improving the marketability of the product. The SIT is species-specific and ecologically sound, and unlike some other biological control agents, released sterile insects cannot become established in the ecosystem and thus have no potential to cause adverse effects on the environment. Sterile insects can be released from the air 
even from high altitudes, resulting in rather uniform distribution. Given the natural mate-finding ability of insects, pest control with the SIT is therefore feasible even in difficult to access habitats, such as forests or mountainous terrain or in protected areas. Sterile insects can be reared in the country that wants to use them, reducing the expenditure of hard currency to import insecticides. The SIT is appropriate in certain situations, where an insect is a key pest of an economically important crop or livestock, where preventive control actions against an invasive species are justifiable, where the pest always exceeds the economic threshold. Where there are trade barriers to commodity exports caused by quarantine pests, low pest prevalence areas can be established with suppressive releases of sterile insects, followed by post-harvest treatments. Alternatively, if pest eradication is feasible using the SI, pest-free areas can be created from which commodities can be exported freely. And where a pest is a major constraint to economic development, such as the vector of an animal disease, and other sustainable control methods are not available. Regarding the economics of using the SID, cost-benefit analyses shown that, when viewed over a realistic period, the SID is cost-effective and compares favorably with conventional insecticide suppression, even neglecting the environmental costs of insecticide application. To illustrate, in a feasibility study of the economics of medfly control, the annual cost of insecticide suppression is relatively expensive, and the operations continue indefinitely. SIT suppression also continues indefinitely. It costs less than insecticide suppression and is environment friendly and compatible with the biological control of other pests. SIT irrigation during the few years of operation requires an initial investment in equipment and infrastructure and has higher operating costs. However, if it is pest free, operating costs fall substantially and are related only to surveillance and quarantine. In the end, any SIT bitch is her than insecticide suppression. There are several steps in applying the SIT. Assess the technical, operational, economic, and environmental feasibility of using the SIT. Benefits and costs with those of conventional control. The adult stage of the target key pest should preferably not harm the animal or crop host, for example, a non-biting fly or a moth. Pest species that migrate, like locusts, or birds are a nuisance, like houseflies, are probably not a problem. Monitor the pest density, seasonal fluctuation, population structure, natural rate of increase, distribution, dispersal behavior, and reproductive interaction with neighboring populations. A geographic information system helps to identify pest infestations in commercial and non-commercial areas and predict which areas have the potential for pest population increase. Purchase sterile insects or produce them in a mass rearing facility. Select a radiation dose that provides adequate sterility. Insects differ considerably in their sensitivity to the induction of dominant lethal mutations, and radiation doses may be different for each species. Select methods of handling and releasing sterile insects that maximize insect quality and distribute sterile insects efficiently. For example, the free release of killed adults from an aircraft. The global positioning system and automated control systems provide accuracy in releasing one or more species in the desired numbers over predetermined flight lines. 
monitor the density of released sterile insects and that of the wild population in order to measure the impact of the SIT. To illustrate, using data from a tsetse fly eradication program, increased numbers of released sterile males, raised the sterile to wild ratio, and the percentage of induced sterility, resulting in the decline and eventual extinction of the wild fly population. Monitor the area periodically. If the pest has been eradicated, geographic barriers may prevent natural invasion. Establish barriers or quarantine procedures to prevent reinvasion or reintroduction. SIT programs have had a significant impact on agriculture. In the case of the New World screwworm, the total cost over the past 40 years of the screwworm fly eradication program for all of North and Central America is about 1 billion US dollars. This compares with the economic benefit to the cattle industry, amounting to about 1 billion US dollars each year that the region continues to remain screwworm free. The discovery of the screwworm in Libya in 1988 led to another successful SIT eradication program, completed in 1991, which prevented the establishment of this major pest in Africa and the Mediterranean basin. The SIT program is underway to eliminate the screwworm in Jamaica. A production factory in Mexico provided the sterile flies for both the Libyan and Jamaican programs. That setting parasitic disease trypanosomosis, causing sleeping sickness in humans and nagana in cattle. Trypanosomosis is a very severe limitation to cattle production in almost two thirds of sub Saharan Africa. Current local control efforts are costly and are hampered by drug resistance in trypanosomes, side effects of continuous insecticide use expansion of fly distribution into new agroecosystems and lack of sustainability. It has been estimated that a continent-wide campaign against the tsetse fly and trypanosomosis would cost one billion US dollars per year, but that the benefit from trypanosomosis eradication to overall agricultural production in Africa could be as high as 4.5 US each year. Pilot SIT projects, Tsetse fly-free areas, were created in parts of Burkina and Nigeria. And in 1997, Tsetse was eradicated in Zanzibar, Tanzania, resulting in the disappearance of the disease in cattle. The immediate benefit is the increased survival rate of cattle, but the long-term benefits are the most important. The absence of the disease allows the introduction of much more productive exotic breeds, resulting in increased milk and meat production, and animal power to work the land. The establishment of fruit fly-free zones has opened up new markets for agricultural commodities, which previously could not be exported or required post-harvest treatments due to the presence of the medfly or other fruit flies. Using the SIT, the medfly has been eradicated in Mexico, California and Florida after incursions or accidental introduction. The preventive application of the SIT in California, where the change from using insecticide to the SIT is highly appreciated, has reduced the cost of control by at least 50% and has permitted the continuing export of agricultural produce, a vital feature of the state's economy in Chile in 1995, resulting in an estimated benefit to the Chilean economy of 100 million US dollars per year. Also, there are ongoing medfly SIT suppression or eradication projects in Guatemala, Peru, Argentina, Portugal, Jordan, Israel, Africa, and Australia. Following an extended and coordinated SIT program, the melon fly was eradicated 
in the Ryukyu Islands of southern Japan. Eradication has opened the door to significant fruit and vegetable exports to mainland Japan. Even though the eradication program cost about 100 million US dollars, the benefit each year is estimated to exceed this amount. The onion fly is being suppressed on an annual basis in selected fields in the Netherlands by releasing sterile flies produced by a private company. The Queensland fruit fly has been eradicated in South and Western Australia. The Oriental fruit fly was eradicated in Guam using the SIT. And pilot SIT suppression projects are underway in the Philippines and Thailand. Sterile Mexican fruit flies are being released along the California-Mexico border to maintain a fly-free zone permitting the export of fruit commodities from the Imperial Valley of California, and in Texas for pest suppression to allow the export of citrus. This fly, and also the West Indies fruit fly, have been eradicated using the SIT in the northwestern region of Mexico, making possible for the first time the export of citrus without quarantine restrictions. Along with other control methods in an IPM system, sterile pink bold have for many years been released in the San Joaquin Valley of California. The of this major cotton pest by immigrant moths has thus been prevented. As one control tactic among several others, sterile moths also be released in the valley to suppress the pest population. A sterile insect release program against the land of South Central British Columbia has been in operation for several years. Excellent suppression of the codling moth has been achieved in the southernmost zone of the region, substantially reducing the number of applications of organophosphate broad spectrum insecticides. At least 28 countries have used the SIT on a large scale for insect pest suppression or eradication. The future prospects for the SIT are bright indeed. In concept and application, Area Wide IPM is an effective system for managing certain insect pests. The emphasis in pest management today is on biological, environmentally safe, sustainable, ecological and economical pest control technologies. This emphasis has made the SIT an appropriate method to suppress and sometimes eradicate insect pests. Already an insect, the SIT will become a component of area-wide IPM systems for even more key plant and animal pests. Continuing research is improving the capability of the SIT to control insects. New genetic sexing strains of the medfly and special rearing procedures permit the production and release of only males. Releasing only males reduces costs and makes the SIT more efficient as sterile males disperse more widely in the absence of sterile females and sterile males compete more intensely with wild males to mate with wild females. Studies in molecular genetics by identifying discrete populations of tsetse flies in Africa will help develop a successful strategy of tsetse suppression or eradication. Technological improvements and optimization of insect rearing and release procedures through mechanization and economies of scale will reduce rearing costs and yield more competitive sterile insects. For example, in rearing the Mexican fruit fly in Mexico, what used to be the cost of producing 20 million sterile flies per week is now the cost of producing 100 million. Especially SIT pest suppression programs will encourage commercialization of insect production and this will make sterile insects more available and even more economical. Already in the world there are at least 30 sterile insect production centers with a total capacity of more than 4 billion insects every week. 
As the environment friendly SI is applied on a wider and in new situations, prospects are excellent for improved animal and human health in forests, stored products, and animal draft power.